Discover the best kept secrets from the leading entrepreneurs across the globe. Learn from the greatest minds in business with the MyCoder podcast. Here's your host, Sam Payne. Hello and welcome to the MyCoder podcast. My name is Sam Payne and thank you for listening today, guys, wherever you are listening from. Today, we have a huge treat for you. We have a returning guest on the show, Mr. Richard Moore. Now, Richard, good friend of mine, featured on the show on session 002 over six months ago now. And he bought so much value. Okay, guys, it's unreal. I still have people to this day complimenting me on that show and saying how much value they got from Richard's interview. And it's no surprise because Richard, for the guys who don't know him, is a specialist when it comes to sales. He's a business consultant. He's been in this game for many, many years now. And he does work with corporations, with large businesses, with small companies, startups, entrepreneurs like yourselves. And he's helping them primarily through his eight-step startup course, okay? Now, when I spoke to Richard, we, we, I mean, we're in contact quite a lot, Richard and I, and I said, do you know what? People got so much from the last episode, it'd be a shame not to get you back on because, and he agreed. And one thing that we didn't really touch on in the last interview, which I know a lot of people have sh- problems with, is sales, online sales, how to sell your products online. It's all well and good knowing you want to set up an online business. It's all well and good knowing you've got a product that people may or may not love, which is generally the case because people say, I've got an idea. I've got a product I want to build. People are going to love it. But when it actually comes to selling it, that's when the issue starts, okay? Now, Richard, I mean, he has been selling. Guys, this guy has sold multi, multi five-figure deals, six-figure deals, and he's also sold low ticket products as well. He's got experience across the board selling to so many different people in so many different niches and industries. So Richard, today, we're primarily going to talk primarily, sorry, going to talk about sales, online sales and how you can really go out there and drive traffic to your products, but only drive traffic on how to convert the traffic that hits your pages. So they then buy your products, okay? Because that is what we want at the end of the day. So guys, Enjoy this one. I'm going to stop talking now. This is the MyCoder podcast with Richard Moore from The 8 Step Startup. What's up, everybody? Sam Payne here, and welcome to the MyCoder podcast. Now, today's guest is Richard Moore, and that name should sound familiar to the regular listeners of the show, as Richard was the second person to feature on the MyCoder podcast. So, we are very happy to have Richard back today. Now, Richard is the founder of The 8 Step Startup where he runs his online courses, his blog, and business consultancy. Richard, how are we doing today? I'm great, Sam. Thanks very much for having me on here. It's a pleasure again. Yeah, thank you for coming back on. Now, guys, we have covered Richard's story on how he become an entrepreneur, how he set up his businesses. So we're not really going to cover that today. But if you do want to check that story out, and I recommend you do, that is in the My Coder podcast session 002. So that will be in the show notes below. And today we're going to talk on all things sales. So get your notepads and pens out. If you're struggling with sales, guys, this is the one for you. Now, Richard, before we start, I mean, what have you been up to since you was last on? Um, yeah, it's been a few months, actually. Um, I've I've had quite a lot going on, quite a few projects, um, but one of the main things I launched, uh, the Basics of Sales course, um, and uh, any of your listeners who have already gone ahead and, and bought it, I want to thank you huge amounts. The uh, the kind of the, the, the uptake of it was, was it actually outperformed ASAP Startup to begin with, but that was been my big thing, and so I'm sure uh, we can talk more about that in the future, but yeah, it's been fantastic, and um a couple of other projects as well, uh, including a book, uh, and uh, and that more on that kind of uh, in the future, I suppose. But yeah, it's been it's been a, a heavy summer with lots of, of work to do, and it's just been fun to engage a lot of people and indeed enjoy your your podcasts as well. Yeah, well, thank you for that. Firstly, I mean, it's nice to know someone's listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and with the book as well, I mean, that sounds interesting too, Matt. I mean, what, what's that book going to be about? Yeah, so that's going to be around startup. So it will kind of infuse my story a bit because uh, for, for whatever reason, some people in, seem to be interested in hearing more about that. And um, in fact, uh, uh, in November, there's going to be a Huff- Huffington Post article focusing on that kind of thing. But a book is, 
is bringing together a lot of the essentials of building a startup. Um, it just comes from this idea, which is the same with the Exit Startup course, and it's the same with uh, the Basics of Sales course, is that there's uh, a lot of gurus and experts who aren't really giving things on the most basic level. And it means that, that uh, information uh, for a new starter isn't accessible. And if you look at a startup, uh, entrepreneur Sam what you end up with a lot of the time is someone with an amazing amount of ambition amazing amount of motivation you know they'll run through walls for their for their business and they've always got a great idea but sometimes they really need a helping hand with some essentials so the book will be focusing on essentially how to make a startup in an intelligent way um, and a case of kind of getting yourself to lift off as soon as is possible so it's going to be quite a practical guide um, but I, I want it to not have too much in the way of war stories, just more of a kind of a, a bit of a how to. It's a little bit of everything, but very focused on getting a startup going in, in a sensible, intelligent, but accessible way. Mm. That sounds awesome, mate. I mean, that actually reminds me because when I first got into this journey, if you can call it a journey, mm. I did exactly that. I immersed myself in literally every piece of information I could get my hands on. And before I knew it, I'd spent 90 to 95% of my time just consuming information. Mm. And it, the hardest thing to do, because a lot of it contradicted itself as mm. well, because you was listening to so many different experts. And the hardest thing to do is actually get clarity on any of it and, and yeah. point it in some direction. Yeah, you're right. And what, what happens a lot of the time is when you are learning something, and I'm sure a lot of your, your listeners can relate to this, you're learning something and every two minutes you have to stop the train, get off and go and learn about the thing you're trying to learn. So at that particular moment, well, what, what are they referring to now? Now I've got to go and learn about that so I can get back on the train and continue what I'm learning. So there's so many jump off points where you have to try and kind of get your head around the different themes because a lot of the authors, not all of them, but a lot of the authors and in inverted commas gurus, they assume too much, I think. Yeah. And uh, sometimes people want to kind of paint by numbers, treat me like I'm a five-year-old approach to things. And um, not not everyone, but some people do, and that makes life a little easier. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I'm looking forward to that coming out, mate, and we'll definitely help you promote that as well. So for the listeners listening today, you will hear a lot about that when that's up and coming. We've got but, pressure to finish it now. <laughs> yeah, so yes, get on with it, Richard, please. <laughs> um but we are going to talk about sales today, Richard. So before we dive into the questions and get to the meat of the content, why should people listen to you when it comes to sales? What's your experience with sales? How are you helping people? And what's your past experience with companies and, and small businesses? Yeah, thank you. That's a, a really good start off point. And um, I'm a que it's a question I'm really glad you asked because it is something that everyone's going to be interested in. So uh, the fact is, I originally started my first sale, if you like, when I was, back when I was 13, uh, when I actually um, decided with my friends that we would build a business uh, selling computers. Um, so I it kind of started way back then, but that's not really sufficient um, uh, credentials to go off. But about 15 years professionally, I've been selling uh, in various guises. So at the turn of the century, I was selling internet marketing platforms. So I was literally saying, as I mentioned in the last podcast, you know, there's this thing called the internet. Why didn't you come and buy this? And and I think what's interesting is that very quickly, once I kind of started generating commission, I spent time and money rather than out, you know, drinking and playing football at weekends. I was investing it in buying books, daring to even go to conferences on how to negotiate and investing myself. So in my early 20s, I found that that was a really strong way of kind of step changing things. Then I also looked at things from the other perspective in that I was training sales teams. So they wanted to try and scale me, the companies I worked with in London. And I found that in being successful in training new sales execs, you, you have to understand uh, not just how to sell, but also what someone has to go through to be a sales exec. So I understand that psychology quite well. And for those of you who are concerned about just selling internet advertising, I've sold everything from physical products to online products to marketing and other kind of um, uh, things in between as well. And some of the sales, I mean, I've sold products that are $5 through to um, £100,000 deals. And so closing that kind of thing, it's interesting because a lot of the fundamentals are precisely the same as selling a very small uh, entry level product. Uh, often the only difference is that you're sweating a bit more if it's a larger amount of commission, right? 
And so, <laughs> so but other than that, I, I've just spent most of my working career either selling directly or teaching people how to do that and helping them build multi-million pound businesses means that I've got a, a strong amount of experience, not more than anyone else necessarily. Some people have got more, but I've been intensely focused on this space for a long time. And nowadays it's consulting. So I'm drafted into companies to help develop their training um, programs and specifically uh, help maybe even sales directors to understand how to position themselves. So it's a world I enjoy and it's a world you can really have fun in. It doesn't have to be a cringy, cheesy, horrible place if you work in sales. Mm. Absolutely. And do you know what? Like for myself personally, one of the struggles coming into running my own business was sales because I, mean, I was in the military before that. I had a, a printing apprenticeship before that. So I was never out to be a salesman. I was always just reacting to, to, to words of command, I suppose. Mm. And that's the story of a lot of entrepreneurs out there today is they concentrate so much on their idea and their business, but I think they do lack in investing in the sales side of things. I mean, how important is sales to the success of a new business, especially a startup? Yeah, you might argue I would give a biased answer given my background, but in fact, because I've also built my own startup businesses and my main focus is, is actually guiding and, and uh, consulting with people who are also building them, it's continuously apparent that sales is, and not close to being, but is by a, a long way the number one thing to be aware of because it's sad, right, that there are so many wonderful ideas out there that never make it because someone doesn't get behind the commercial side. And I, you know, I, I can show as much as you like, but, but the reality is if, you, if early on you begin the process of getting the product out there and generating revenue, that is literally the blood that runs through the veins of your business. And it doesn't have to be difficult. It doesn't, you know, if you can't afford someone who can sell for you, you're gonna have to do it yourself. But what it requires is a passion in your product because that is typically what you really need to get uh, to convey that it's something worth paying attention to mm. and you know ultimately if you are enjoying what you are selling then or enjoying the product you're producing then people will want to get involved or at least check it out and with sales especially early sales comes confidence and with confidence becomes belief that you know what this business is has got some legs and it perpetuates everything it is the reason why businesses will typically work at the beginning or not. Other reasons are to a little greater extent involved, but even things like, oh, I didn't have the capital, that's not the reason, it's an excuse. And I've proven myself that before having necessary capital, I can still get a business off the ground by generating sales for it. And the quote I love from that was the sales it's literally the blood that runs through your business's veins i love that absolutely. absolutely and some people don't like it that's the thing sam and some of the people I've, I've coached they've got these great ideas and they all talk about the dream they've got of what it will be like when their business is killing it but when it comes to the selling then they really clam up but you just got to go through a bit of pain it will hurt it will be ugly as i told someone recently but it is the way that you will get progress. If you, I mean, you've got, to, you've got to be clear on this. If this is the kind of person you are, that if you are trying to avoid sales because it's something you don't want to do, you're headed for a bit of danger. So you need to embrace it in some way or other. Mm. And I mean, we, we, we will, listeners, we are going to get into these questions, but there's one point I want to add to this because mm. Richard touched on it was if you're passionate about your product. Now, I, never been a natural salesman but what i have been is excited and passionate about what i'm selling mm. and when i'm speaking to people face to face i mean emails it's hard to get that excitement across in an email mm. but when i'm speaking to people on the phone or face to face or i just spoke at a seminar on saturday and there was room for the 20 guys and they could feel my energy they could feel my passion and that was enough i'd sold them because they mm -hmm. could feel that i was passionate about it and i've proven it it worked but it was the yes. passion and excitement behind me as the as the product, I suppose, that helped sell that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Yeah. And you know, you know, I I never had sales or even business background. Um, I, I I was fortunate enough to go to university, and I had degrees in history, so nothing to do with business at all. Um, but it's precisely the same, Sam. The reason why I got sales from the word go was because it wasn't because I knew how to sell. It was because I was given a process, but moreover. 
I was passionate, if not about the product to start. I mean, the product originally was like, I was like, this is so <laughs> not rock and roll. I was selling internet marketing, right, to people who worked on sh- in shipbuilding in Norway. These guys are like, what are you talking about? Why would I want to do this? We make winches. You imagine the guy with like grease on his hand answering the phone. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, that wasn't going to work. It was the, the passion was related to the outcome. The outcome was where I really drive, drove the kind of the kind of the excitement from. It was like this is going to make me something, and this is going to be exciting. We can build a relationship, but more importantly for me, at selfish time, I was like, I can make some money mm-hmm. here. So that's where the passion came from, and delivering something with passion and, and being evangelical. You don't have to be, you know, you don't have to be full of like hyperactive and bouncing <laughs> off the walls. You yeah. can be intense. But it always comes from that. If you believe and have conviction, then the rest is really straightforward. Mm. Well, let's delve into how the listeners can actually go out and do this now. So Mm. I think one of the problems people are facing is everything is going digital these days. Everything is going online. And even offline businesses have to sell online to a certain degree now. So in this online market, how does selling your product or service differ when approaching online sales as opposed to a face-to-face sale? Yeah, that's a really good question, really um, very current. And in 2016, which is a point of recording, we, 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 we are that you need, you know, you need to be aware that if you're not on this now, you better hurry up because it's already well, well in, in, in on its way. There are a couple of things here. Firstly, you need an awareness, I think, especially if you're if you're working online, then social media is going to be one of your main vehicles. You need to have an awareness that attention span, right, is very tight. People have loads of attention span for things like Facebook, but it's very heavily divided amongst other things. You know, you're going to appear on someone, pop into someone's timeline and that's it. So you've got to think about impact to begin with. Okay. Mm -hmm. What's your why, as Simon Sinek said in his wonderful TED talk, is very important because you have, uh, if you can deliver something beyond, here's the nuts and bolts of what we do, and you're showing how you add value and solve a problem, that may stop someone to caught, catch the eye. And it's those initial seconds that are crucial. But in addition to this awareness that you need to um, have impact and punch, no one's going to sit around waiting for you whilst you get a message across. Um, the other thing is abundance because they're, you know, again, just take Facebook as an example. Was it a couple of billion people using it at the moment? You absolutely have to be there regularly. And that this is something I mentioned in that eight, in the eight step start, of course, this idea of the care approach. So consistency, abundance, relevance and engagement. So every day you're showing up multiple, multiple times. So this isn't badgering people. This is just showing that you're you're around and you have a voice that's louder than, than others. It's just there's a lot of people shouting out out there. So you've got to be there. Um, and, it, you know, it's wrong in 2016 to think you'll win by having a tweet three times a week or a Facebook post once a week. It's not going to be enough. You know, it needs to be going beyond that. So I think social media is your is your real start point. Um, but to answer your direct your question directly, you need to have an awareness of a sp- attention span. And one way of grabbing people, okay, is to have something exciting in terms of uh, your an initial message, but also um, the E of that word care is engagement. If, and this is something I learned early on, Sam, when I when I moved things online. The moment someone dares give you any attention, even a like, right? You go, you contact them, you thank them for it, you engage with them, and that's how you start making it uh, a, a point of, of person-to-person contact. And that's what's different. Most people don't do it because they're lazy and they think it's too much work. And it, you know what? It's tiring, right? You're up at two in the morning. There are 35 people who have liked your stuff. Yes, go contact them all and say thank you because you get response then. And, and that's what it, life needs to be now, like uh, 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 for someone who's going digital, I feel a lot more engagement with the people directly. Yeah, I love that. I mean, I suppose if you brought that back to if if someone approached you and you was you was in your shop, for example, and they said, well, "I like what you're doing here," naturally we'd go, "Well, thank you. I appreciate that." <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, you would. <laughs> yeah. But what's even better is that's that's your icebreaker. So how, how crazy is it to not say anything or to not continue? So what brings you here today? And then have you know 
whatever it is, you know. But the nice thing is that if someone walks into a shop, you don't have them walking in with their profile, if you like. What you have is them just turning up. So you're making judgments. Whereas if someone sends a message in return, you can quickly do a cheeky stalk and you can say, you know what, this guy's into this and this. They do this. They like that. I saw you posted this thing. If you put if they're doing public posts, so comment on it, you know, and so on. You know, and then eventually they might be interested in you. And if they are, then sign up for my, my uh, list if you're interested in more like this. Or do you see what I mean? It's just it is yeah. the wonderfully straightforward way of engaging with people that ultimately you can sell to. Yeah. And I, I think one of the issues is, I mean, this is a long game. There's no quick turnaround when you engage people like this on social media, unless you find like the rare person who's just act just so aggressive and just wants in straight away. But yes, it's very rare yes. you find people yes. like that. So, for the listeners today, what should they be expecting in terms of a return of investment, so to speak? Because that's a term that we've heard quite a lot. What's my return on investment on my social media activity? Yeah, and this is where people fail a lot is because they're expecting instant gratification in terms of return investment. Hang on, I've spent a thousand quid this week on adverts and not getting any buys yet. So why is that? Well, you know, it, it doesn't work like that. You have to continually be there. And I think in terms of a, well, I suppose in terms of return investment, what you we've got to be thinking is it may be that your return investment is epic, but that may be in weeks or even months from now. Because what what doesn't come with working online is uh, a more instant sense of trust that we get as human beings when we inter interact uh, on a person to person level. You and I have both done face to face uh, sales, Sam, in, in whatever guise is. And when you meet someone, shake their hand, look them in the eye and the way they speak to you, your brain is in your DNA. You're able to make judgments on what that person's like and whether or not you kind of think they're a bit of a psycho or someone worth maybe working with. Or something in between, but online it's hard to work that out. And so, you know, it, it is important to make sure you're you're spending a bit more time um, uh, recognizing you need to build a story behind who you are, build a bit of a narrative, get someone emotionally thinking. Do you know what? I like that person. You're always there. You always got great value to add. Return on investment will come, but you've got to be willing to invest typically a vast amount at the beginning in order to get some something of a following. People give up after two, three, four weeks. You need to be going for months and months every day. If you drop off, and I've tried, I've experimented by, uh, on this, by the way, deliberately to see how it would work. I, I drop down to one or two posts a day. I try it for like three or four days. And you just drop off a cliff, you know, and it's amazing how you can have followers. But unless you're right up at some mad levels of, of traffic, then people aren't going to really... Uh, remember that you're out there unless you're constantly in their face in the nicest possible way with information they're going to want to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And you, you mentioned trust there and it's harder to build trust online as if it would if you were speaking to someone face to face. So yes. how can people, what strategies can they use when they're posting, when they're putting their uh, social media marketing strategies together to ensure they're building the trust with their audience? It's such a relevant question, and um, I'm a big believer that when it comes to actually closing, ultimately, a sale, the two things you need, which seem a bit weird, it's not closing ability or you know being hardcore with someone, it is trust and comfort around a relationship with you. Those two things, I've sold millions over the years, those two things are always in play, especially when you get a decent deal. Unless, as you mentioned earlier, someone's like, I just need to buy this, don't even care about the relationship. Okay, So in order to build trust, what you need to do is show someone who you actually are. Again, it goes to, it's, if you really want to understand sales, you want to understand people. If you want to understand people, you want to understand psychology. And in order to really get into the depths of that, you've got to understand what people's instincts and urges are like. What is it going to be like if someone sees you for the first time? They make a judgment on you. Plenty of people have said to me, I thought you were a bit of an idiot, Richie, when I first met you. Uh, you still are. Uh, or they might say, I thought you were a bit of an idiot, but actually I've come to warm to like you. What you've got to do is put yourself out there not a regurgitation of other people out there. So, for instance, because I know that a lot of your audience, Sam, are entrepreneurs. This is a real message to them, if I may. If you feel that putting out posts, only posts, 
uh, that um, are shares or, or reposts of what Gary Vaynerchuk or, or Grant Cardone has put out there. What you're doing is you're assisting in the distribution of their message. You're pumping up their value. By association, yes, you're giving yourself a little bit of value. You'll get your likes and your comments going, love this. Yeah, this guy's great. But what about you? You've not got anywhere out of it. So authenticity in the sense of being you, in addition to showing you, even if you feel like this is really embarrassing, this is scary. I've got a client who's like this and she's just like, I can't do the Facebook live thing. It's I just talk too much and it's really difficult. I said, just try it every day. And now she's great at it. If you put yourself out there, no matter how amazing you are, some people will hate you. Remember that. So on that basis, don't be anyone different. Be you, add great value, and eventually some people will stick. And over time, you'll get gr you know, a really nice core hub of people that really, really buy into your thing. And I think if you look at, um, there's a book I dipped into recently. Uh, I know you're, you're keen on books as well. There's a, a, a book called um, Oversubscribed by Daniel right, uh, Brain, yeah. Uh, brain, yeah. So it's a uh, what's his second name? Daniel uh, Priestley. Yeah, Priestley. Yeah. It's so important because one of the points in there is you don't need hundreds of thousands of followers. You need a core, and it might be that you need a hundred followers who really love your stuff and buy into you because they've spent time almost getting to know you, and they feel like they know you well. You've never met them, but they're part of your journey. They're always there. You know, they always turn up to your live Q and A's if you do it on a Monday, for instance, what I do, uh, but also other things as well. And you just think you get to that point where these people see you almost as a friend and an ally and they come to you, they send you messages and they really lean on you. The trust all comes from being you, one, but secondly, putting yourself out there. And if I may just finish on the things like the Elon Musk question, uh, quotes or the Sam Walton quotes, whatever, it's fine. Stick them out there. But, it, you know, when you see when I do those things rationalize them why are you putting it there write a bit of a caption don't just rewrite their quote or put their quote on why are you writing this quote what value does it actually have to give do you see what i mean so if you Absolutely, relate it yeah. to your world it makes a difference yeah that's great advice that really is and i actually heard um i think i was listening to one of your monday q a sessions and you yeah. covered that in one of your sessions actually add mm. add your own value to a quote which yes to me it just highlights that so many people don't do that and yeah. you, you touched on haters as well there, which is funny enough, because I've, I've got a couple of really like avid hater fans. Um, Good stuff. If they're, That's if, they're, if they're listening in, hello, we're doing very well. Thank you for your attention. <laughs> That's the funny thing. They will be listening. That's the hilarious thing. They listen more than anyone else because they want to try and find out things yeah. that you do wrong. And they're loving you. That's well, the thing, really. what, what's great about it is, I mean, we won't mention names, obviously. That'd be very unprofessional. But these particular <laughs> haters... Um, continually will prod and poke but i find that everyone else that is benefiting from my services see straight through it they're like who are mm. these idiots so you, mm. you don't have to worry about haters i want no. to throw that in there because i've had first-hand experience with that and they, they still hate me to this day and i'm very, I'm and, very uh, happy for that and a lot of them are transient they're passing by they see your thing like oh that's ridiculous and then they carry on going and um you know and all your all of the people that matter to you are the ones that like they're like who is that guy yeah. and then you just carry on yeah so it's part of the background. Get used to it. Yeah. And um, the thing is, you just got to say, like, who's in control here? Is it my emotion or is it the practical direction I have in building my business? If my emotion's taking control, well, then that when that person does some hating, I'm going to stop the world from spinning and spend an hour wallowing in how that made me feel. You don't have time for that. And as I mentioned recently on a post, um, you know, your business shouldn't have to wait for you to pause and have a bit of an emotional breakdown about it because it can't move forward. You need it to, uh, you know, you need it to, well, it needs you rather to, to get on with it and stop being uh, so vulnerable. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, well, we've discovered now how someone can approach online sales as opposed to face-to-face -face sales. We've covered how they can build trust with their audience, but there are, are listeners uh, tuning in today who sell themselves as a brand and they sell their services right. as themselves as a brand and there's also people that are setting up companies and selling physical products or digital products as a company yeah. so how should someone's selling approach change when they're approaching either themselves as a brand or a company selling a service or a product 
So just to be clear, are you saying how, how, how should someone approach a sale if they're doing one or the other? Or, yes, or, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. I don't think nowadays that there needs to be too much of a difference between the two, okay? If I am, uh, let's create a scenario. If I am going to be a um, fitness coach in the sense of, you know, I coach people through, um, you know, lifestyle and fitness and nutrition and feeling good about themselves or if i'm going to sell uh nuts and bolts to an uh, automotive manufacturer then both approaches need a half decent solid product but what you do need to bear in mind is that being because we're talking about digital and being online you need to be aware that you need to tune in first to the type of people that will buy your product and once you really know who they are, and this requires you to do a lot of kind of imagining who that person would be, you'll find that you tune into the kind of language as it's known that they would use. Some people want to hear and see certain things. The former group stereotypically want to see a lot more motivation and pump and energy, whereas the nuts and bolts kind of uh, uh, producers maybe want to see something slightly different about your prowess, your quality, your credentials, the association to uh, other customers as well. All of this still requires you to still be out there regularly talking about how um, you know, you're know you impacting and adding value to people and every so often peppering what you're talking about with, and here's how we do it, you see? Mm -hmm. Because people will understand very quickly what it is you do, but they get turned off if it's all me, me, me. So you need to be uh, value-led. Uh, and, you know, the, the classic, I would have written the book myself, but he got there first and did a great job in it. Um, uh, Gary Vaynerchuk book, um, Jab, 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 Right Hook, is the, the perfect way to look at it is give value, give value, give value, then ask for something. So you must always have, and I feel this is the best way of working in sales, always have a give mentality first, help people out. So if I'm selling nuts and bolts literally to a car manufacturer, if that's my focus, how can I help them first? Okay, how can I add value there? Do I need to create some kind of event all right. Do I need to provide some kind of value uh, in, in that world on online, for instance? Do I need to bring everyone together for some kind of seminar to discuss this a bit more? How can I give first before I have them say, do you know what? That was really valuable. What is it you do? Do you know what? That might be of use to us because that's the best, most, most fulfilling, simplistic, although long game way to sell and you ultimately get happier people who last longer, who are loyal, who spend more money. But I've done the quick ram it down your throat, what's wrong with you, why don't you buy it now kind of selling. Uh, seriously, this is 15 years ago. The first way of selling was hardcore, call a CEO, cold call, and ram it down their throat and make them feel bad sometimes unless they didn't buy it. And that's a hard world to be in. And it's, it's, you know, uh, working kind of in puppet mastery and in manipulation. And it's not the kind of sales that stick. It's not the kind of sales where they're like, do you know what? If you don't mind, I've just got to write about your stuff. I've just got to give you a testimonial. I've told three people about you today. It doesn't spread the word. You have to knock on a new door every day for your new piece of business and that's not fulfilling at all so yeah. hopefully that answers your question you, you really need yeah, to have that same approach regardless of type of product yeah and that's great advice and do you know i, I love that because that's literally what happens with, with the guys who are very good at sales and making a killing online i mean we, we were talking previous to this i was on the phone to murray edwards and, and for the guys who don't know murray murray is a fantastic salesman and he's helping so many people out so check him out but me and him were talking about how um, I could better my sales and your name cropped up and he said he wants to connect with you because of the value you're adding. And it's, it's, it's just, if you are adding value, even other influencers in a market will recommend you to other people. Yeah. It's, it's, such, it's such a great way to do it. I and suppose look, it doesn't even feel like sales, right, when you're doing it that way. No, no we, well, exactly. And I'd say it's way more stimulating because you get so much more uh gratification on show people love it and here's the thing here's the detail if you want to set yourself aside and you want to be uh in a level of abundance where you achieve great success what you've got to understand is that the majority of people do the same thing 
the majority of the people do an average thing and that average by default is because most of them are doing it that's a very low level of sales with sales typically comes a reward because you're getting someone to give you uh, stereotypically speaking you're getting someone to give you money because money in our world is so compelling people will chase it directly now if you are chasing money directly as your only uh, reward or outcome in a sale what you end up doing is cutting corners being lazy and focusing on the sale okay which is short-termist and long term, you don't create this snowball effect where you win more and more. So if you want to be distinctly average, where you will probably do very little, and I'm not going to diss MLM, <laughs> but what I will say is if you're the kind of person who's on Instagram firing out message after message, because I get them every day, <laughs> the kind of message every day that says, hi, which is the only interaction we get and all the rest is buy my stuff, look at me, look at this link. What you end up doing is being the kind of person that sounds like everyone else who's not willing to invest a little bit in getting to know someone. And you would be stunned the reaction you get because to actually ask someone even how they're doing before talking about yourself ad nauseum is so much, it's like light years above the average. You wouldn't believe it because it's so obvious, but most people don't do it. So if you want to go make yourself different, all you've got to do is spend a modicum of energy on actually getting to know someone and asking how they are and engaging with them instead of talking about yourself. And you won't represent the masses who are trough feeding, and this is why you get these stats like, and I, get, I don't know if this is true or not, but I've heard recently someone say, you know, in those kind of industries, about 1% of people make more than $10,000 a year. I mean, it's just pointless. What, what's that for? So just, just bear that in mind. Give a little, and you get a bit more. Uh, uh, Adam Grant's book, Give and Take, amazing. There's a really good book on that. Well, we'll put the link to that book in the show notes. That'll be there for the guys. And yeah. one way I described it actually the other day when I was, I was taking that talk was if you walked into a shop and say, for example, you're selling a pen, because I'm holding a pen is the first thing I thought yeah. of, um, you wouldn't, as soon as they walked in, you'd go, check out this pen, this pen's nice, it's silver, it's shiny, it's blah, blah. You'd go, hi, how can I help you today? That's the first exactly. thing you'd ask someone, right? And I think people forget it. that with online sales, don't they? They forget exactly. the human. <laughs> I think you're right. The thing is, the more evolved version, if you, if you take a mobile phone shop analogy, the more evolved version is that some people, they won't say buy this mobile phone, the first one they can come across, but they will lean towards uh, an iPhone or a Samsung purely because it's the one they probably know most about because they sell the most but you've got to step back and go what does this person want they might want something completely different and um uh you know i think we talked about this the other day because uh, sam and i hooked up for coffee and i think when i was when i was buying my wife's car the guy was like i'm I, he saw me come in and was like right it's alloys it's turbos i can't wait to tell it and i could see it in his eyes and when i said buying this for my wife by the way just to just to for, you know, position you. This for my wife. I won't be driving it. She genuinely wants low fuel economy and uh, <laughs> and the space for the push chair. And it's like his face dropped. But then you get. Then he was like, Do you know what? I can't talk about the stuff I like talking about. It's it's got to be what you're after. So sometimes you got to. Um, and you bought the car, so it worked. <laughs> I did. It did. I was in a, it was, I said to you, it was like buying a pair of trousers. I think I was there half an hour. It was like, yeah, that's fine. You know, when when it's. When it's a nice car, then I'll spend a bit more time. But this is like buying bread. <laughs> I need it. Have you got any good? Here's the money. That was yeah. it. <laughs> so one question that I'm always asked a lot, and I know it's a massive issue when it comes to sales, especially online when someone can't physically see the person they're selling to, is how can they establish who it is they're selling to and what do these people want? So how can you establish who your customers really yeah, are? absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It's really difficult to do. If you're going high ticket, it's a good opportunity um, to have them go through a little bit of a process where maybe it's pre-qualified, but then you get them to engage with you um, and, for instance, have a Skype call or something like that if, if you can't meet them. I um, originally, um, well, not originally, but, but several years back, I helped to um, build a executive search, so kind of a high-level recruitment brand in the, business, in the, in the city, 
And um, we did over a million quid in the first year because what we did was initially engage with people through LinkedIn and create a call to action and a bit of interest. And essentially, the, the initial point of interest was that we do this. We really feel this would be a value. I'm in your area. Can we have a coffee? And just basically as much as possible trying to get in front of people. So be the reason why they want to meet you, but also suggest that you do. And I was I was literally doing the same with like some high ticket uh, customers in that business. We were saying, do you know what? I'm actually in Zurich uh, in two weeks time. That's perfect. Why don't I meet for coffee? And they're like, what a great coincidence. Why do you come in then? So like off the phone, right, I'm going to Zurich in two weeks then. So do what you need to go meet these people. It was easy when it was just Canary Wharf or something. But you have to go out there and, and, and try your best to meet them. So you... If you can manage to get a small step in your direction, you should maybe be taking the huge leaps and, you know, get yourself out there. But in terms of uh, getting to really know that person, don't come on too strong. Minimal pressure, almost zero pressure is the best thing. Ask someone about their world, get to know them, give them value. Be in a position where they lean on you as an ex point of experience for what you do so for instance it's very easy to be awestruck by people and say oh wow what you're doing is amazing things like that but if you're the one who's meant to be the expert in your field then try and be a little bit more aloof give them a bit more value help them out with things and you'll find you you get to know that person quite well and um you know then then if they ask you can send them links and things like that but to kind of understand the person it requires you to shut up a bit and get them to try and talk in whatever guise that might be by email, by chat, or, or ideally by meeting face to face. But nothing beats uh, the power of trying to get someone face to face or at least on the phone. Or, or you know, if you're going to have a phone call, why wouldn't you have a Skype call? Because then you can meet them. That works more for the high ticket products. I recognize if you're selling a volume product, which is, you know, $5 subscription or something like that, it doesn't mean you don't care about them too much. But Try and, try and give them the opportunity to meet you and get in connect and connect with you. Um, and sometimes you've got to put in the, the hours and, and just spend time, you know, with chat or whatever it might be on. So if someone's going for that, that low, um, the low ticket, high volume product. Yes. If, they're, if they've got to sell 1,500 subscriptions every eight weeks, that, mm-hmm. there's no way they're going to get in front of that many people. So mm-hmm. could people meet, could the guys that are, creating these products go out and just meet four five six people that they feel could be a potential customer and then once they've built this 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 customer profile that's going to apply to the masses yeah you got it and, and you know you can leverage word of mouth and um uh, one way of doing this is to, is to get these to give these people something in order that they maybe share and so on and so forth and actually early on um what i did when i launched states of startup is i i I brought people onto the course at a very low price in return for them giving a testimonial. Mm. So all of their friends are then seeing them, not me, but them, who they trust and validated as a friend, saying, you know what, you should check this thing out. And that was a great way of perpetuating things. So um, there's actually another thing that's mentioned in that in the oversubscribed book um, by, by Daniel Priestley, uh, this idea of, of using people's experience, uh, sorry, using people's networks rather to um uh kind of pass on uh your good your good name and it's way more powerful than you telling people as much as you can and as you've rightly said uh, sam very scalable as well mm, absolutely absolutely so i'm actually interested to know richard what um you've done with your basics of sales course like, what, what are you putting in that that's helping people with their sales and why should the listeners be interested in that yeah, really good uh, uh, question. So the basics of sales course, instead of 73 lessons, <laughs> which ACIP Startup had across eight themes, which was this epic project I built, um, it's six lessons, okay? Each one is between a uh, half hour to an hour long. Um, and I've, I've basically reduced down uh, loads of experience and, and sales things I've done uh, into these sessions that cover essentials. So it starts, the, the first lesson is, engaging with people and building rapport on how to create a connection by the way this is absolutely if you're on the phone 
but it's also if you're face to face as well or, or and in fact you can use most of these elements for uh you know email and chat the, the fundamentals are there the, the second thing is i'm understanding or uncovering or identifying what someone's real need is and how to understand what it is they're actually after so you can position your solution in the right way to meet them uh then we cover objection handling which is a big deal for some people and just handling what the way uh, you look at this and the way you turn that it, it, and there's actually a very simple system i put in there the way you turn that into um you know something that that can help you leverage the sale eventually uh we also talk about closing because that's a big deal for some people it re again doesn't have to be uh, it can be very simple and, and it, there's a way i show it to be very natural um then we do upselling for those people who want to work with more longer term and get more from from their customers and finally because they asked about this all the time you know i'm not a life coach it's not my chosen focus but there's a section on um on mindset and attitude as well uh which is typically one of the main reasons why you're going to be successful or not and your kind of state of mind in it so that's what i cover and as I mentioned earlier, it's designed to be as accessible as possible. So very simple, like you're a five-year-old, simple stuff. So you can put it into practice right away. And, you know, I've had great success stories already. Uh, one guy uh, pops into mind who, who wrote me like about, about a week after he'd, taken, he'd done the course. And um, he said, I used some of the skills that you, you put in the course. Uh, and I called a meeting with my manager and I managed to get myself a massive pay rise using your course. So, like, there you go. Yeah, very so, nice. if you get nothing else, I'm really pleased with that. So, it, it's it's designed as as well, as well as for those who are in sales, for those who maybe are starting a business to make use of it as well. Mm. No, it sounds incredible, actually. And guys, there's a link to that course in the show notes below, and I would thoroughly recommend checking that out. That's if you want a pay rise from your boss, or you are actually in sales as well. But that's wicked that he's got that result literally a week after doing your calls incredible stuff so, so. yeah thank you there's a disclaimer there this will not guarantee pay right <laughs> <laughs> let's get that in there <laughs> yeah. um okay richard well thank you for coming on to the show again today i mean last time you come on i got so much great feedback and i'm so happy you come on again because again you just dropped so many knowledge bombs for people there to use so thank you for coming on now before we let you go today have you got any parting words of wisdom for the listeners of the show um, yeah. Okay. So if you've got um, uh, any focus on sales, okay, you need to bear in mind that if, if you take one thing away from this, that online or offline, you need to be value led and talking about uh, uh, how you can help people first rather than bowling in and talk about your product. Introduce yourself for, uh, fine, but focus first on giving and helping with no agenda or at least no perceived agenda i'm here purely to help and let whatever happens does if you do it enough you'll get an abundance of sales and you will enjoy your life a lot more rather than oh man i've got to make these calls where most people reject me and it's so much more thrilling when you have this approach because it means that you spend your time doing the right things which is helping people and getting invoices delivered to your inbox so it's a wonderful way to do it okay so give first and focus on giving more than anything else and in return you get your sales love that love that be value led people you heard it there richard thank you very much for coming on today where is the best people uh, where is the best place sorry for people to find you online and how can they get in touch with you yeah, so you can reach me on um, my email. I'm happy to take emails from people. I get loads, but I always answer them. So richard at 8stepstartup.com. Uh, that's the, the word eight, not the number. And uh, But yeah, find me on Facebook. Uh, Sam and I are connected, but also richardmore.official is my profile. But more probably a better place is Richard Moore fan page, uh, which is my official page as well. And, uh, and we've said there's the 8stepstartup.com website where you can find out a bit more about me. Perfect. Richard, thank you so much for coming on today and giving us some of your time. Really appreciate it, mate. All the best. Thanks so much, Sam. Good luck, everyone. Okay, guys, and there it is. Richard, thank you very much for coming on, my friend. Always a pleasure to have you on the show. And guys, if you want to hear Richard's last podcast interview with us, it is session 002 of the My Coder podcast, and that will be in the show notes below, okay? And in that episode, guys, Richard outlines exactly how he started out, how he became an entrepreneur, how he set up his businesses, and pretty much everything that's gone into how he's got to where he is today, okay? So that is a fantastic episode, guys. 
And again, I know so many people that have got a lot of value from that. So check that one out, guys, session 002. And Richard, if you fancy uh, dropping by again, my friend, please feel free because I know the listeners get a lot from these interviews with you. Now, guys, if you are thinking of setting up a business or you've already just started a business but you're not quite sure where to go next, then we have the program for you. This is the Higher Performance One program. And in this program, we do something a little bit different. We don't just work on the business side of things. Okay, there's so much information out there that you can consume with regards to setting up and running your business. What we really work on, guys, and we really home down on is the fact that you need to be there mentally, okay? You need to have the inspiration. You need to be in spirit, as we call it, okay? You need to know exactly why you're doing what you're doing, who you're doing it for. You need to understand, really, really understand the laws of success. We call them the laws of success because they are as real as the air we breathe, these laws. And if you live by this, guys, things come a lot easier to you. Not easy, just a little bit easier, okay? And it all sounds a bit woo-woo and la-la, but it really isn't, okay? When Warren Buffett, Warren Buffett was asked, what is the best investment someone can make? Warren Buffett is one of, he's, well, he's to say one of, he's the wealthiest investor in the world, worth billions and billions of dollars. His answer was, you need to invest in yourself. The best investment you can make is in yourself. So we really help you do that, guys. We really help you drill down on you. Who are you? Okay, and that's what we need to understand. Once we understand that, guys, and we really help you unleash your potential, okay, we really help you rec- recognize just how powerful you are and what how much value you truly have to offer, then we work on the business and we get your business up and running. We get you moving, making money and helping thousands, hundreds of thousands of people with whatever service it is you're providing. And we've already done one seminar, guys. We had huge results off the back of that. So we have got our second seminar dates and they are now live, guys. We have got the 28th, the 30th and the 7th of December, okay? So the 28th and 30th of November and the 7th of December, okay? This will be held in Kent in the UK, and there's limited places on this guys we have 10 places available because we really want to spend time with whoever's coming on this and drill down on exactly what they need to do personally we're not talking about large groups here guys we are talking about really focusing on the few that really want to come and make a difference in their lives because we're here to help you okay we're here for the three percent not the 97 percent, and that's that simple so guys check those dates out in the show notes below book yourself onto the session if you're unsure guys there's a link to one of my talk we've done the last seminar we've recorded that guys and the whole the the uh, talks we've done on that seminar are live there as well okay so you can check out the work we're doing with people and then from there ju- jump on that link guys and book yourself up for that high performance one program and that is it guys so thank you so much for joining me today i will leave you to your day now i hope you have a fantastic week and i'll see you next time on the mike Ida podcast <laughs>